May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On our high altar, which is bedecked in purple, sitting in the centre of the high altar is the dark wooden cross. It used to be on top of the steeple of the church. It was taken down and was mounted on a very heavy base. And my first Lent here, I felt it would be good to have something really powerful to us to focus on during our worship and our meditation and our prayers. So I suggested we put it in the middle of the altar. And there it sits every Lent. If you have a chance, aren't able to come on a Sunday, but can pop in one afternoon. It's worth coming in and just standing in front of it and contemplating the roughness of that cross. The cross is, if you like, the corporate logo of the Christian church. It is the most bizarre thing, the beginning of this, med- this reflection. I began by crossing myself in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, marking up the yes, it's holy pointing, I'm pointing to me. When I offer God's blessing, I point to what I'm blessing with the sign of the cross. The little babies get the sign of the cross in oil on their foreheads. On Ash Wednesday, it would have been a cross marked with ash upon our foreheads to, to mark us up, mark us up. My hands, when I was ordained a priest, were anointed with the cross in oil on either hand to remind me that these are the hands that do God's work. The cross is a very important image for us in the church. But what a weird one. It's strange. Why should we have the cross, an image of torture, an image of violence, an image of distress, an image of everything that is almost wrong with the world, is our focus. Is our focus. Why? Well, obviously, Jesus was killed on a cross. That's, that, that's, the, that's the, the reason. But why do we take that? Why not something pretty? Why not something nice? It's because for us as Christians, the cross is a vital image. It reminds us that Jesus died, but yet wiped out death. In that moment on the cross, when Jesus cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We realise that this is humanity being broken apart and being transformed into something bigger that comes really on Easter Day. But in that salvific moment, that moment of salvation on the cross, Jesus takes once and for all the human sacrifice of death. We know that wherever we travel, whatever happens to us, wherever we go, God through Jesus has experienced it first. In those moments when we feel utterly and totally dismayed, should we ever be publicly executed? Should we ever be beaten and whipped? If we should ever be driven through the streets, being shamed before everybody else? We know that Jesus has walked that way first. So whatever whatever happens to us, God will be with us. Like in Psalm 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your rod and your staff, they comfort me, because you've been through the valley of the shadow of death. You're not going to take me through the forest of flowers, no, we're going to go through the valley of the shadow of death, but you are with me all the way. So it is no surprise that this Sunday, our gospel reading, talks has Jesus saying those words, if you want to follow me, Take up your cross and follow me. Take up your cross? Oh, please, Jesus, I want to have a nice, comfortable life. I don't want to have to do anything that's complicated. I don't want to have to do... No, if you want to follow me, take up your cross and follow me. Step into places of pain. Step into places with confidence. Challenge the unjust structures of our world with confidence. Remember those poor children in Yemen who are just there for snipers to shoot at. Remember those poor abandoned people in in the waters on the Mediterranean trying to find safety. Remember the people being shoved into container lorries to be sold off as slaves. Remember the the, the Muslims in in, in, um, Myanmar and in, in China who are being persecuted. Remember all those people who are caught up in poverty. Remember the victims of warfare. Remember the bullied. Remember the unhappy. And, but also remember those who are bullying them and those who are selling them and those who are, who, are, who are prejudiced enough to make their lives hell. Remember them. Because that is humanity. And that is who you are called as Christians to deal with. 
and we deal with it in different ways. Some have the confidence and courage to speak up aloud on large scale events. Others of us will do things in small ways. Treating the person we meet in the street with respect. Respecting the person who deals with this in a bullying and challenging way. Trying to be kind and generous when somebody, somebody is horrible or mean to us. Remembering that we too have the capacity to break and to crush people. Taking up your cross and following Jesus means living truly to the gospel, caring for the gospel and loving. It's not an easy thing to do, and that's why we have one another. That's why we have a Christian community, that together we journey on this path. So each one of us has our various gifts, each one of us finds our place, and each one of us is called called together to take up our cross and follow Jesus. So as we walk, walk through this Lenten journey, as we prepare ourselves for Good Friday, when we will hear again that Psalm 22, which was one of, another one of the readings for today, where we hear the words Jesus crying out from the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We too can cry from our hearts. So yes, we know what it is to be forsaken and we know what it is to be loved. And together, as a Christian community, we will step on this Lenten journey, preparing ourselves to show once again our great resurrected love. Amen.